walking back to the university and the office from a lecture and uh, one day <laughs> before the flight to MIT which is tomorrow and uh, feeling a little bit overwhelmed I'm not going to lie there's a lot of things happening a lot of things to arrange before leaving for two weeks with ongoing research and uh, it's a bit much but uh, let's see hoping for excitement tomorrow T minus zero because I am boarding the flight as we speak. I am flying to Heathrow, London, and then to Boston. So let's hope it's not very, very long. We've made it. We are in Boston. MIT day one and I am ready to go. I woke up at around 5 a.m. because of the jet lag and everything. I am uh, very excited. I'm still at the hotel. I still haven't looked at the premises of MIT or anything, but I still cannot believe that I'm here. It sounds and it feels a little bit like unreal. I had the picture of MIT on my vision board since almost two years now, and uh, it's actually happening. I'm here. I'm going there in a few minutes. I will keep you posted. Let's go together. I just got out of the hotel and uh, I am aiming to find some breakfast first and then we're heading to MIT. arrived people this is the i believe the most kind of famous building one can see in the on google but probably we are on the other side of it but yeah it says it massachusetts university of technology so here you go i am on my way to the student building to pick up my access card Here. Ah! We have arrived. I am here. Uh, there is too much sun. There is a lot of emotions happening. There has been a long time waiting for this moment. So I am quite emotional myself, and uh, the sun is also doing its work. And yes, this is it. This is MIT, I am here, finally, and I am on my way to the address where the lab is. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is this the reactor of MIT? It looks very much like the reactor building. Oh my god! The lab is not far away, so it might as well. It might actually very well be the reactor.
Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon. I had a very weird sleeping pattern since my body thinks still that I'm in another time zone. Um, but here I am, finally, after 2 p.m., made it out of the hotel room and going to explore Boston a little bit. It is Saturday and this weekend we are not working. We might be working the next time because that's when we have our acceleration time and I'm gonna tell you all about that. But yeah, let's see. It looks very pretty. I am super excited. I'm gonna be filming here left and right a little bit for you. And uh, I'm actually going to the MIT merch store. I wanna buy me some MIT merch. Hello everyone, it's Sunday, it's my second rest day and again my sleep was a bit on and off but I'm exploring a bit more of the campus and actually trying to find something to eat and I think we found it. One thing I really enjoy about Boston is the fact that it's cold and it's snowy, which I love, but at the same time it's very sunny. So during the day it's quite bright and it's very pretty, nothing compared to the northern winters. And uh, it's kind of like the best of both worlds if you want to have a cold winter. So this is quite awesome. I ate my pizza and it was delicious and slightly big. Uh, like every portion in the US is, but uh, I am walking and I'm going to explore some uh, areas and I'm gonna take you with me. There's uh, no nuclear related stuff today because it's Sunday and we're starting strongly and aggressively tomorrow morning because the time zones really don't work with me. So my first meeting tomorrow starts at 7 a.m. and my second one at 8 and then I have to be at the lab by 9. So let's see how that goes. It is so pretty. There was a snowstorm warning last night. So this is water <laughs> and there is ice and there is snow and it looks fabulous. I love it. So this is a quiz for you. How many phases of H2O do we have present in this frame? Go ahead, comment in the section, comment section down below. Yeah, I'm still in the bridge. It's so very pretty. I need to keep walking. It's gonna get dark with the pace I have.
bit excessive. It's like, look at the place. I think one would be up. Look at this view though. The sunset on the building. Stunning. It's so pretty. I am at the park. I forgot how it's called. I don't remember. I, I might put it up there. And I'm actually walking on water. This is frozen water. <laughs> and uh, I'm walking on it. And the reason I know it's water <laughs> is because I'm an engineer. No, I'm kidding. It's because I can see that there is a bridge there that I'm going to cross under. So I would assume this wouldn't be just a pathway and they would build a bridge over it. I've never seen this place not frozen. So I don't know. But I assume, oh, I found it. It is water. This is proof that I'm standing on ice. This is the bridge. Beacon something, I think, is this park. It's quite the pretty one. The sun has set, people are walking on water just because they can, and so do I. It's pretty cute here. So I forgot to answer the questions while I was filming the previous video, but here we are with the Grand Canyon at the back and I'm ready to answer your questions. So the first one I thought is interesting to answer is a question that came up asking if Sweden was the fourth nuclear weapons country in the world, I assume. And that really depends on what you mean by nuclear weapons country. Sweden had a nuclear weapons plan uh, that was never really materialized. They built a reactor called Augusta reactor south of Stockholm, which operated at around 60s and 70s. And uh, they did sign, though, a non-proliferation treaty in 1968 and the reactor was shut down in 1974. So they did produce some plutonium, but they never really materialized the creation of any nuclear weapons. So the next question is how much of the energy produced by nuclear power is used for the processing of uh, the uranium itself from mining all the way to fuel and then disposal. Interestingly enough, for one kilowatt hour, around 0.2 kilowatt hours is used for processing of uranium and that includes mining, taking it as an ore, cleaning it up, enrichment, conversion, all of those processes into a ready fuel assembly that goes inside the reactor and also the disposal of this fuel assembly after its lifetime has come to an end. So roughly 20% of the energy produced is used for the uranium processing. I saw that there is a lot of interest in uh, fusion power and how does a fusion reactor works. So I thought it would be interesting instead of answering it quickly in the comment section to actually make a separate video about this. So stay tuned, keep an open eye and there's going to be a video about uh, fusion reaction soon enough. There is going to be a second part to the MIT video with more of the actual lab work that I did and a little bit of an explanation as to how the experiment went and what was it all about. So stay tuned for the part two. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification icon. From the Grand Canyon, it's been Elena, your friendly nuclear physicist. And until next time, stay curious, stay nuclear.